Let's have a look at the strength of acids and bases and we'll learn in this video that that is not the same thing as pH. We know that pH is a measure of how acidic something is or we could say how basic something is. So I have a little chart here that shows two acids in it. We have hydrochloric acid and acetic acid and both of them are in solution at the same concentration so 0.1 mole per liter for both acids and we can see that they have a different pH. So let's think about what has to be the same and what has to be different in these two things. So first of all if they have the same concentration what does that literally mean? Well that means there's the same number of molecules dissolved in every liter. So in this case that's 0.1 moles per liter or we could say you know take a mole 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd and take point one of that, that's how many molecules we have dissolved in point one liters. And that's the same for both of these acids. And yet they have a different pH. So what is pH actually measuring? You might recall pH kind of standing for the power of hydrogen, loosely speaking. But it's a measurement of the number of hyd hydrogen ions or hydronium ions that are present in solution. So while these two acids have the same number of molecules, somehow they have a different number of hydronium ions. And this is what we want to investigate, why is that the case? So let's look at what happens when we put hydrochloric acid in solution. We are taking a hydrochloric acid molecule and according to the modified Arrhenius definition we are going to react that with water and from there we are going to somehow produce a hydronium ion because that's what makes this thing acidic and we're going to be left over with a chloride ion as well and so we can see what happened was the hydrogen from the HCl was transferred to the water to form the hydronium ion and that left us with the chloride ion and of course this could have been written just as a strict ionization HCl turning into H plus and Cl minus but we do know that the first definition is a little more accurate, it's a little more modern. And so looking at this balanced chemical equation let's ask ourselves what is really the difference between acid concentration and what we call pH. Well we know that acid concentration has to do with how much HCl we dump in whereas pH is a measurement of how many hydrogen ions or hydronium ions there are in solution. So that's the difference between those two things and that's why we can have two acids with the same concentration and a different pH. And so let's write out the balanced chemical equation for the other acid, for acetic acid, and compare and ask ourselves how and why they could be different. So we would be taking a CH3COOH. Again, let's say, understand this in terms of reacting it with water to produce a hydronium ion and whatever will be left. So in this case, the acetate anion, CH3COO minus. So both of these acids, we dumped in 0 0.1 moles per liter and we measured the pH of the resulting solution. So how could the pH be different for the two of them? How could the number of hydronium ions be different if we dumped in the same amounts of the reactant? And the answer to that question challenges a basic assumption that we've often made that reactions will go to completion. And that is not always the case. So the HCl, this this arrow here we could say happens completely that every single HCl atom a molecule that we have turns into a hydronium and a, and a chloride whereas for the acetic acid this arrow does not happen to all of the molecules so some of the acetic acid molecules turn into hydronium and acetate ions and some of them actually just stay in their original form and they never react. And so HCl can be classified as what we call a strong acid and acetic acid is what we call a weak acid. And for strong acids more than 99% of the molecules react
and for weak acids, less than 50% react. So there's a big difference between strong and weak acids, and it's really about how reactive they are. So let's look at this in a bit of a more visual way. So I'm going to make a crude sketch of four beakers down here, and we're going to go through some thought experiments. So right now these beakers only have water in them, but I'm going to add some drops of acid. And I'm going to generalize here, so it won't be specific to our hydrochloric acid or acetic acid. I'm going to just talk about strong acids and weak acids in general. So in the first beaker, I'm going to have a dilute concentration, but it's going to be a strong acid. And over to the side, I'm just going to uh, show you what I'm going to use for my notation here. So I'm going to call a strong acid HS, and we're just going to for simplicity's sake, think about it in terms of ionization for now. Even though we know this is the old Arrhenius definition, it'll just make our diagrams a little simpler. So you know I'm going to write H+, plus. I'm going to write hydrogen ion, and you know that that means hydronium ion because it, it links up with a water molecule. So S is going to stand for strong acid in this case. So for our thought experiment, let's imagine we drip some strong acid into here, and every drop that we put in contains four molecules of our strong acid. Since we want this one to be dilute, we're only going to put one drop in, so we're only going to have four molecules. So what happens when we put that drop into the beaker? Since it's a strong acid, we say that all of the molecules react. So every single one of them has turned into an H plus separate from an S minus. So we now have four H pluses and four S minuses sort of swimming around separately in the beaker, if you will. They have undergone complete ionization, more than 99%, or we're just going to imagine it's 100% of the molecules have ionized. So they've all turned into ions. So in my next beaker, we're going to do a slightly different experiment. We are still going to have a dilute solution, but this time we are going to use a weak acid. And that's indicated by HW, W standing for weak. So it's going to react in the same way, but we know that weak acids do not ionize very much. In fact, less than 50%. So we can imagine that one of the acid molecules has ionized into an H, an H plus and a W minus, but the rest are still original HWs. And now we can see why this solution will have a lower pH, because pH depends on the number of hydrogen ions, or hydronium ions, and this solution has a lot fewer of them, even though the acid concentration was the same. We put four molecules into both beakers. And so our next step in our thought experiment is to now consider concentrated solutions. And one of them will be a strong acid, and the other one will be a weak acid. And so the way I'm going to show strong and weak, or sorry, the way I'm going to show concentrated and dilute is to show that now I'm going to put two drops in. So it's going to be more concentrated because I'm putting twice as many molecules in. So for the strong acid, we expect all of them, or basically all of them, will ionize. So now we're going to have eight H pluses and eight S minuses in our solution because every single molecule is ionized and we had eight molecules of each to start with. But for our weak acid, of the eight molecules, only relatively few are going to ionize. So maybe two of them turn into separate H pluses and W minuses, and all the rest are still as HW in their original form. So for a little summary off to the side, concentration is a measurement of how many acid molecules we put in. pH measures how many hydronium ions or hydrogen ions result from this after they ionize, or we could say after they react with the water. And the reason that these two things can be different is because of what we're going to call the percent ionization. So for an acid that ionizes 100%, a strong acid, we can say the concentration of the acid is equivalent to the hydronium ion concentration. I'm just going to go back up to the top and make that note. So the concentration of HCl is equal to the concentration of hydronium ions. And from here, we could calculate the pH if we wanted to. 
whereas for our weak acid, the concentration of our acid molecules is far greater than the concentration of hydronium ions because only a small fraction of them actually react with the water. And the last thing I want to say is that all of these things work exactly the same if we are talking about a base. You could literally repeat everything I said and every time replace the word acid with base and replace hydronium ions with hydroxide ions and it all works exactly the same. So we can have strong bases that dissociate or that react with water 100% to form lots of hydroxide ions and we can have weak bases that only react partially to form some hydroxide ions. So hopefully that clarifies why concentration and pH don't always match and explains this idea of strong acids and weak acids or strong bases and weak bases.